Hey, it's Christoph Klugson, the power linguist here. Today's talk, my power linguist talk, is going to be about something that's really important that a lot of the linguophiles like to talk about, and that is what is the best way to <laughs> motivate yourself to learn a language, or what is the way that you will learn the language the fastest? Well, a lot of the linguophiles, the little taunts, the posers, the amateurs, they don't have a clue. Uh, they like to say it's passion. You're, you're feeling for the language. The way that you want to be involved in the language will help you learn the language. It is not anything to do with isomorphic reality. And I'm going to explain that now. So basically the linguophiles and everything they've said is wrong. Passion has nothing to do with learning a language. And I'm going to give you several examples. Now, the reality is that you will learn a language when you have to survive in that language. If it is up to you to function, and by function I don't mean uh, being a, a tourist or anything like that. And a lot of the people want to say, well, you know, there are a lot of people who are expats that live uh, in different places like Thailand. Thailand's a very complex issue and I'm going to tackle that in a different video but basically the reality is that expats here don't have to learn Thai because they're by law they cannot be in many businesses to compete with Thais. They're not going to make any money so they're just spending money and those people who are spending money don't have to learn the language. It is those people who have to earn a damn living they have to learn the language. So those people who move to places with macro languages like French, Spanish, or English, and they speak uh, something like uh, Albanian, for example, they're going to have to learn the languages because they're not going to find somebody, especially in the interior of the United States, the people are monolingual, they speak English. So th those people are not going to be able to switch, they're not going to understand Albanian ever in their life. And somebody saying, I'm learning Albanian, they're not functional in Albania. If they're living in Iowa, they're not functional in Albania. They, they don't have to be, number one. And that's what it comes down to. If the environment means life or death, you will learn. It has nothing to do with passion. It has nothing to do with how much you like language. It doesn't matter if you hate Russian. If you're from certain places in, in uh, Central Asia and you are, and you go to Moscow or Leningrad to work, you will learn Russian regardless. This is the history of the world, by the way. And now I'm going to give an analogy to people to drive this point further home. Now some of the intelligent people will understand it, those who don't understand it, I can't help you and I'm not getting paid to explain calculus to a five-year-old. So if this doesn't make sense to you or you want to argue with it, your lost cause, basically, and a crackpot who wants to believe in things, argumentum ad consequentium. You want things to be the way you hope, you desire and hope, and so you argue that that is correct, but it is not correct. It's not realistic, it's not isomorphic, and that's the thing. I'm too legit to quit. I give the reality whether you want to hear it or not, and I save a lot of people a lot of time. So basically, here's the analogy. Now, if you live in a place where you must fight, to survive, and I mean physically fight, like if you were living in the Congo, Uganda, uh, Colombia at times, Sarajevo, many places, a lot of places that I've been like that. It doesn't matter if you like fighting, if you watched fighting, if you didn't watch fighting, if you have books on fighting, if you talk to your friends about fighting, it doesn't matter. You're going to fight or you're going to die. Do you hear me? You will fight or you will die. This is the same thing that happens to people who speak pointless languages and have to move into a macro language society. They're speaking hill languages uh, or they're speaking minority languages in Cambodia. They will learn Khmer to trade, to buy things, to try to get work or they will die. Those are it. The two choices you have, live or die. Now, those people who have never been in those situations don't get it. You will learn. Now, people like the United States, where people come to the United States and must learn English, say that they were speaking Albanian, for example, uh, the L1 speakers want to make uh, fun of their accent, it doesn't matter, they'll still be able to communicate. And those L1 speakers have no clue about how difficult it is to learn an L2, 3, 4, 5. 
that's always the uh, bane of the monolingual, but the point being here, now so if you're fighting to live, then that doesn't mean that you're going to become a great fighter. It doesn't mean that you're going to become uh, enamored in fighting, maybe. You may not like it, but you still have to do it. That's the point. You don't have to like it, you just have to do it. Now, those there are people who follow sequential structured scientific methods of learning how to fight, which is what I do, which is what I've been pioneered in the world. My stuff's the greatest, you know, called the world's strongest self-defense, and there's a reason for that. And there are methods also of learning languages that are structured, scientific, and sequential. Now those will take you further, and of course, if you like what you do, you'll do more of it and you'll apply more time, but that has nothing to do with whether you will learn a language. You will learn a language, if you learned your L1, it wasn't your choice, you had no damn passion for your L1. You learned your L1 because you wanted to communicate, you wanted things. You wanted things from your parents, you wanted things from the people, you wanted to talk about your, you know, you wanted to go to the bathroom, you, you know, if you, you needed to piss, you wanted to eat something, you wanted to cry, you wanted to yell, you wanted to uh, come say something about your brother or sister or some other kids, you want to talk about this or that, that can only be expressed in a language that you had no passion for. It was learned because you needed to use it. The same thing with happens is the most incredible reality about languages. If you must learn a language or you will live by doing this or you will die by not doing this, you will learn it or you will die. That's it. It has nothing to do with these lingual file, well I feel like this and that, oh I want to do the language, you know, it doesn't matter if it takes me the rest of my life. Yeah it would because if you were not eating, you damn well will pick your damn ass up and learn how to learn a language. You will learn it regardless of your stupid ass feelings, your emotions, or your passion. All that little crap that you have in your head, your meta thinking about, oh, my emotional state is so important. No, it doesn't mean a good goddamn. Doesn't mean anything. So I'm being realistic with you because it's time to break all this crap that all the would-be, wanna-be <laughs> experts, the pundits, the linguophiles babble about. So, those of you who don't need to learn languages, who are dilettantes, who are tourists, I don't care. That's not who I deal with. I deal with people who must learn languages, who are serious, who are responsible, who are adults, who understand the cold, hard realities of life. Now, if you want a hobby, make cookies. Bake brownies, all right? But don't try to act like you know what, what is important about learning a language, because I've explained it. So that's the power of linguists. Too legit to quit as usual. See you next time.